The pygmy seahorse is a remarkable little animal. Their camouflage is so amazingly good. You really have a hard time seeing them against the coral unless you know what you're looking for. And even then, it's really difficult to see what they're doing. They live in this obligate relationship with another animal, with a coral. And they're only found on that one coral. It's the only place you ever find them. They spend their entire lives almost living attached to that coral. Thought this would be a great animal to bring in. No one's worked with it, no one's had success with it. And so we thought if we could bring them back and get them established here in a controlled environment, we could make observations and study various aspects of their biology and their life history that's just unknown to science. I challenged the aquarium staff here to keep that coral alive, and we collected some pieces of it back in 2011, and we actually kept it and grew it for about three years before we even attempted to collect the seahorses, just to make sure that we could keep its home alive uh, so that we had a better chance of keeping them happy and healthy. We collected them in the Philippines as part of the Philippines Biodiversity Expedition that the Academy went on in May 2014. You never want to touch the seahorse. You don't want to just pluck it off because it'll damage and hurt it, and obviously it's so small. So what we do is we take a cutting of the coral, a fragment of the coral, and we sort of coax them to go onto that. And then once they're on that, they, they stay firmly attached to that. They go into a jar, and then we slowly bring them up to the surface. And these were so special that we essentially went from the collection in the wild and then immediately got them on a plane in Manila and immediately shipped them back here. From the time they were in the wild to the time they were in an aquarium in San Francisco was, I think, something like 36 hours. They like it pretty well. They've been breeding, so that's uh, kind of an indication of, of likingness. And then all of a sudden they started producing babies. The male gave birth to babies in captivity, which is amazing and something we couldn't have predicted to happen. Well, the challenges in keeping and displaying them, there's really two. The first is that they're very small, so you got to get them food, and you got to get the coral they eat food, and you got to make sure they're eating. So they eat a lot of tiny, tiny foods that we have to kind of keep alive and find and be able to grow here ourselves. And the challenges of displaying them, of course, is going to be the same thing. They're very, very small. We've had lots of discussions about possible ways to make them viewable for the public. I mean, they're only the size of, you know, my thumbnail when they're adults. My favorite part about caring for them is that everything is new. There's a lot of stuff that's unknown. Nobody had ever actually witnessed the birth of this species ever before. So we were the first to observe that. We're just looking forward to being able to spend a bunch of time writing this out. They're just so highly adapted to life, to the niche that they live in. They're so specialized to live and mimic this coral so perfectly. They're just a really great story about evolution and biodiversity, just life persisting in the strangest places. And they're just really a joy to work with. <laughs>